Hello everybody, it's Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And it's my great pleasure to introduce another one of our FastGraphs ValueU Academy videos, video number six. In video number five, Bill K went over the various earnings metrics that are available on the historical FastGraphs that subscribers can utilize to learn about the companies that they're looking at or examining, as well as the valuations that the market's applying based on those earnings metrics. In this volume, volume number six, Bill's going to take a look at the various cash flows and intrinsic value calculations that FastGraphs offers our subscribers. So Bill, take it away. Thank you, Chuck. Now we're going to look at the balance of the earnings correlations in FastGraphs. So we're going to move down to the cash flow correlations to our really like operating cash flow free cash flow, and also the intrinsic value correlations, EBITDA, that's the alphabet of finance, EBITDA, and EBIT, and last, net change in cash. So we're going to look at number five, operating cash flow, number six, free cash flow, seven, EBITDA per share, and eight, EBIT per share, and nine net change in cash. How do we get these numbers? That's what we're going to talk about next. Now you can see we're looking at these as of 15, some of them, and some of them will change as the PE, and we'll be in, going into that next. All right, I'm looking once again at Microsoft Corporation, the end of their fiscal year, June 30th, 2020. Now we're moving to operating cash flow. We get that number from the cash flow statement. It's $7.90 per share. When we take off our money spent for capital expenditure, we come up with free cash flow per share. And that drops it down to $5.89. We'll get into those in just a second. After we go through the cash flow, those two, then we're going to get into the intrinsic value numbers. EBITDA. This is a number that's closer to cash flow, not quite, but closer. It's a very important number in finance. It's not a gap number, but this number comes up to $8.49 for Microsoft as of the end of their fiscal year. EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, is less. It's $6.89. We'll see how we get that number. And last, the change in cash. Cash change by 29 cents, and we'll look at that. So we'll quickly go through these balance of the earnings correlations in FastGraphs. Microsoft's cash flow earnings and intrinsic value earnings range from 29 cents all the way up to $8.49. Why these five different types of earnings? That's the question. So, like I said, we're going to go into the cash flow statement. To me, this is a very important statement. This takes accrual back to real cash flow. So, we talked before that the bottom line in accrual, net income after all costs and expenses, was $44,281,000,000 for Microsoft. Ah, nice number. But that's only an accounting number. When we do these adjustments, we'll come up with net cash from operations of $60,675,000,000. This is what I really like to see in a great company. They can turn that accrual profit really into more cash flow. Cash is king. So I would say Microsoft really generated 60.7 in real cash flow in the last 12 months. So we're doing those adjustments, coming up with this number. We divide that number, net cash from operations, by the weighted average, diluted shares outstanding. There's your 790. Okay. We see this in fast graphs. We can pull this up and look at that trend. I like that trend line for the last 10 years, and I like the estimates going forward. Ah, this looks good to me. Operating cash flow. Add a PE of 15, we could show a value on that day for Microsoft at $118.50 per share. $790 times 15. 
one way to look at what the value of Microsoft is on operating cash flow. Next, we're going to look at free cash flow. To do that, we see those same two numbers, but now we need to take off what they spent in additions to property and equipment during the last 12 months. This is their CapEx. So out of the 6675, they spent 15441. That brings it down to 45 billion 234 million divided by the weighted average diluted shares outstanding or 589 per share. Free cash flow. So I can pull that up in fast graphs. At 15, 589 would give us a value of $88.35 free cash flow. This is the cash they have left over to spend on other things to grow the company and do other things. Pay dividends. We'll see that in financing. So we take the free cash flow, we divide it by the diluted common shares outstanding and come up with 589. All right, next we're going to work our way down the income statement once again. Sales of 143 billion plus. We've got some costs to do that. We have to match that in accrual of over 46 billion. That brings us down to a 96,937 in gross margin. Then we've got to take off the operating expenses. The ongoing operating expenses during the last 12 months was another, well, rounded up 44 billion, bringing us down to the EBIT. That's an important number. Earnings before interest and taxes. That's 52,959, almost 53 billion in EBIT. That is a gap accounting number. So when we take that number by the diluted shares as standing, we get 689 EBIT per share. Now, those total cost and total operating expenses, part of that was depreciation and amortization on the equipment getting older. You know, when we bought the equipment, we paid cash for it, we reduced our cash. Now, we are amortizing and depreciating those items into the future, taking expenses, but they're called non-cash expenses. We take them off, but we really don't write a check or spend it. So we still have that cash. So EBITDA adds back that 12270. We're adding that back to EBIT to come up with EBITDA. Once we get that number, 65,229,000,000, we divide it by the weighted average diluted shares outstanding and come up with 849. So EBITDA, close to a 15, it's a 14.72 we're looking at uh, PE, value would be 124.97. EBITDA. Last, we looked at EBIT, EBITDA 849, EBIT, which is actually a number that would be uh, 127.26 because it's 689. We're using a PE of 1847 here. Lots of different valuations. EBIT divided by diluted common shares outstanding. 52,959 divided by 7,683 is 689. All right, the last one we're going to look at is net change in cash. Now we need to go to the balance sheet. And it's required under GAAP for Microsoft to give us the last two years. We need to see the trend and the changes. The changes in the first line, the most liquid asset in business, cash and cash equivalents, things that could be turned into cash very quickly in 90 days or less. Last year, it was $11,356,000,000. This year, it's $13,576,000,000. So it's gone up by $2,220,000,000. Liquid cash and cash equivalents. 
Looking at the difference between those two numbers from last year to this year. It's the same on the bottom of the cash flow statement. So we can look at it either place. It shows us also the same thing. There we go. So in fast graphs, that's another default we can bring up of change in cash flow. And you can see there on 6-30-2020, the price, we would say 10556 because we would divide it by a cash flow number. And let's look at it here, debt change in cash. So it's gone up by $2,220,000,000. Simply shows the net change in cash on the balance sheet the company has each year and graphs it as a per share item. So you got that, you divided by the diluted average shares outstanding, you come up with 29 cents. You see the 29 cents at the bottom. Now we come up with a high number there because basically we take the 29 cents times that and we come up with $105.56 per share. So which of these are correct? Once again, as Chuck says, we have to look at all of them. I like the operating cash flow. Over $60.6 billion with diluted shares outstanding, 790, 15 PE, which is kind of the average of the market, $118.50. If you look at free cash flow, we know that's going to drop down because we're taking off CapEx, and that comes up with 589. Value of 88.35. Now we can go into the EBITDA, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization. That's up to 65 billion 229 million diluted shares outstanding of $8.49. Close to a 15 PE, 14.83 would be 124.97. When we just look at earnings before interest and taxes, it's less because we're not adding the DNA back. 52,959, 689 at an 18.47 PE, a value of 127.26. Last was that net change in cash, uh, an increase of 2,220,000,000. That would be a 29 cents per share, a value of 105.92. Nathan and Chuck are going to get in more into these PEs and growth to value a stock. Let them take it from here. Thanks, Bill, for giving us those great insights into the various earnings and cash flow metrics that subscribers have available on FastGrass, but most importantly, kind of how they evolve or how they're created from the various aspects of the balance sheet, the financial statement, and the income statement. That gives us some deeper insights into each of those metrics and why they're important. Now, moving on in our next video, in video number seven, we're going to have Professor Nathan Mock talk to us a little bit about how you use these lines, especially as valuation references. So I look forward to introducing our next video with Nathan. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell and give us a like and all that good stuff. Thanks.